Hey, welcome back to Vox Terra. If you have not done so, please do subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you know when I'm putting up a new video. Look, today I'm going to talk with you about that General Motors announcement, how they're going in a more electric vehicle direction. And look, I, I want to make it clear, I support electric vehicles, but I'm going to criticize General Motors, their relationship to our government, to the American government, and, and the media. Now, but before I do that criticism, just let me make it clear why what's good about electric vehicles. Well, one, regardless of the power source, they consume less energy to get from point A to B, according to the Department of Energy. And the grid is getting cleaner all the time, so, so it's more likely they're getting charged on you know, wind or solar or geothermal, hydro, something more renewable, less polluting. That's why environmentalists call for electrification. They don't emit auto exhaust, okay? So our lungs, you know, the children's lungs, adults, everyone's lungs are getting a break from these, you know, carcinogens like benzene that are in auto exhaust and, and the particulate matter that are related to heart and lung disease. Now, the issues around, you know, mining and, and like lithium mining, lithium extraction and, and recycling of the batteries, well, these are the same issues with mining that you've got with fossil fuels and other, other mining in general, and the same problems we have with recycling in general. Our society just isn't focused on good environmental standards, and that's the very things that environmental groups like Sierra Club, National Resource Defense Council, are trying to, to promote. So, so you don't, you know, use, a, you know, some environmental problems here to oppose a green solution. So where are my criticisms coming from? Well, here, let me share with you an, an investment news article I read from Motley Fool titled, uh, What Does GM's New Electric Van Mean for Workhorse Stock? Now, Workhorse, in case you don't know, is a smaller electric vehicle maker who is specializing in the delivery truck, an electric delivery truck, and maybe a truck that, that you know working people could use for putting their gear in, which I thought, well, that's a great idea. We could really use that. So you can go do, if you're in property maintenance, you can go work on your properties and then have to turn that gas engine on all the time. So I was pretty excited about Workhorse. But now, as Motley Fool is pointing out, General Motors might just crush them, General Motors and Ford. So you'd say, hey, that's capitalism, and I'd say, au contraire, mon frere. That's a type of capitalism. That's our, our you know, government capitalist interaction here. Now, what do I mean by that? So I'm going to both criticize this not only from a more libertarian standpoint, but also, you know, a democratic socialist standpoint. Now, let, let me say what I'm talking about here. General Motors has a long history of wielding power in our government and in our society and, and in our media. So up until recently, they were part of the people lobbying to, along with Trump to stop California from having higher auto fuel efficiency standards than the rest of the, of the country. But when it became clear Biden was going to win, they switched, you know, switched teams on that one. From Electric, October 29th, 2019, in the latest move in the EPA's fight against California's California over clean air, and that's Trump's EPA, very fossil fuel friendly Donald Trump EPA here, several automakers, including Fiat Chrysler, General Motors, and Toyota, came out on the side of more pollution and more death, as reported late Monday by the New York Times. The automakers cast their lot in with the fossil fuel interests, running the Trump administration. So 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 there you have it from electric, you know, magazine or, or news source. But this goes way back. I found for you a great article which is worthy of a video of its own from the New York Times 1976. The outlawing of next year's cars by Bernard Osbel, November 21, 1976. Thursday, September 30th. 1976, and the Clean Air Act was up for debate, I'm quoting from the article. Lobbyists from General Motors leaned forward to catch every word during two years, this is every word within that congressional debate, during two years of fighting this bill and 10 years of combat against its earlier versions. Wow, two years, 1976, 10 years of combat on General Motors' part against the Clean Air Act. These men had relayed dire warnings from the auto capital that the demands were technologically impossible and furthermore would force car prices to rise, cause sales to cave in under foreign competition and throw millions out of work. So not just are, do these organizations have a lot of money and they're lobbying government to favor their interests, and now it seems kind of unfair after lobbying against cleaner cars, they're going to cash in on it, but they received 
have received billions of dollars from the government, which the media barely talks about. From Subsidy Tracker, General Motors has received from state, local, and federal government subsidies totaling in the billions. And just think about those auto industry bailouts. And what do they do with those bailout, that bailout money? Well, some people actually you know, attributed the two crises the American auto industry had to its focus on larger vehicles. I think the first crisis was what was it, in the 80s, and then the, and then the later one in the 2000s, they attributed to this heavy dependence on larger vehicles when people wanted smaller ones for a little while. So they took that money, they got through the crisis, and they used it to then you know fund advertising to, cons to convince people to need bigger vehicles, consume more gas, creating an arms race on the roads. You know, and another topic that really doesn't come up much is what about retrofitting existing cars with, with elect, you know, electrifying existing cars? Well, the way this economy is set up with these big institutional manufacturers, they, they, can't, they can't really, you know, easily make that into a commodity. You've got to pay, you know, Charlie or Sally to spend a lot of time tinkering around retrofitting that car, whereas you can just set up this manufacturing to build whole new cars. Now, I don't really know which is objectively more efficient, but what I do know is that, what our, is that, is that the auto industry and any industry really doesn't have to pay for the majority of pollution it's causing. So to make that new car, you're taking all these resources and there's all kinds of pollution in doing that. But no one pays the price, right? No one's paying the price for, for that mining of that new, that new product or the synthesis of the new plastics. You know, and all the toxins involved in that, no one pays the price. So maybe objectively, retrofitting existing cars is actually less costly, but it's not going to show up because of what's called market externalities. So my point here is that all this power and influence of these big industries and you know in, in our society is actually skewing the market. Had we had the courage, so if you want to call it courage, to let them fail, then maybe we would have had electric vehicles a while ago. If business really had to pay for the pollution it's causing, maybe it would be retrofitting existing cars electrically instead. But the point is we don't know what kind of innovation we would have had if we weren't subsidizing these big players. We have been subsidizing them. And you know, people are afraid to lose their jobs. So I say the solution would be, you know, again, I'm back to my universal basic income. And again, I think we're gonna a lot of people are gonna find it unfair that now these big automakers might come in and crush the smaller electric vehicle makers. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell so you know when I'm putting up a new video, comment, like, share the videos, and uh, support at Patreon. And until next time, peace be with you.